Alrighty. So here's another FNM monthly battle report showcasing weeks number six through weeks number nine of the Ravnica Allegiance meta uh, at my local game store. It's also just kind of showing off what I'm playing from week to week. Um, I think it's my fifth one overall, but my second one for Ravnica Allegiance. So, you know, the monthly battle report is just, um, yeah, it's just casual FNM level, um, you know, reflections. But uh, this month, I wanted to focus on Golgari Graveyard and try and quote unquote get good <laughs> and, you know, um, complete my playset of getting all my FNM promos for uh, Light of the Stage, get a full playset for my mono red aggro deck. Um, which I actually think I'm gonna swap out, make it less mono red goblins, more mono red burn with like, you know, the Gitu Lava Runner and the Wizard's Lightning. So uh, it's kind of interesting seeing where mono red is going at the moment, but I digress. Uh, my intentions were to, you know, really focus on one deck and, you know, try and be a little bit more competitive, but at the same time, after going from week six to week seven making a little bit of improvements with Golgari graveyard i decided you know week eight i just wanted to play something different i just kind of got restless and yeah i actually just think like i prefer that play style of every weekend you know swapping up the decks and you know it's one thing to play on the kitchen table but you know at an fnm level a little bit more serious um yeah it's just kind of like what i like to do um maybe it'll all change once i get on mtg arena and i can really you know experiment with a bunch of different jank um but at the moment, like, I just, this is what I enjoy. So, yeah, I didn't re really actually fulfill with my intentions of focusing on one deck, Golgari Graveyard. But, you know, um, I did complete the Raw Call, uh, Call of Storms Planeswalker deck challenge, though. Um, and even though I didn't get a promo, I did go 2-2. Two and two, So, uh, you know, actually went 2-2 two and two with the true record, not just, like, with a buy or anything like that. So, um, I'm finally done with that burden. And, you know, even though I didn't get a promo for that... With the, you know this most recent past weekend um i did get a really good hit off of a uh one of my booster packs so i hope you stay around for that but going into week six uh this is what i was piloting it was very similar to my vraska uh, uh regal gorgon planeswalker deck challenge deck except i just took out the vraska as well as her two tutor cards uh, and i think i put in two more chupacabras from my mono black control deck as well as um i think one more find finality um but yeah, I also made uh, some adjustments from week 6 to week 7, which I'll get into later, but uh, this was just, uh, you know, the Golgari Undergrowth deck mainly plays a bunch of creatures. Um, I didn't have the full playset of Stitcher Suppliers because I don't want to pay, you know, like a dollar each for, you know, like a mediocre common, uh, uh, uncommon I should say, that I think would, you know, later on is going to be uh, a lot cheaper because um, it's just a 1-1 one -one and it's only applicable for the graveyard strategy, but um yeah i use the pilfering imps as a substitute which along with the district guides um were budget options that i got from sbmtg's uh five dollar gills ravnica decks and i just thought yeah these are great budget cards uh pilfering imp as a matter of fact has i've seen you know people burn remo removal cards on this card on pilfering imp because of how threatening it can be so um yeah it's a great just budget option uh and the district guides um you know a 2-2 two -two where you get immediate value when it enters the battlefield. If, yeah, of course, it's not, you know, game-breaking or anything, but, you know, drawing that half of a card, you know, that land card, and you, you can really just trade, you know, the card. You really don't care what happens to district guide. If it eats a removal, all right, great, but otherwise, you don't mind blocking with it and getting it into, into the graveyard. So it's just a good budget option. Um, the Orzhov Enforcers, I actually wasn't as impressed. Um, just there's too many flyers in the meta game right now. The Crawl Harpooners were, you know, insane. They're they're great in this meta, playing all the full 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 four copies, <laughs> as well as the four copies of Ramnus Chupacabra. Uh, just having that built-in creature removal, since we're not we're mainly a creature-based deck, playing like 30 plus creatures, uh, and having that built-in removal onto a creature really just goes along with the undergrowth strategy because. You know, we don't get the payoff if we're playing instants or sorceries. Uh, but the deck does play the fine finalities um, just to get the re reoccurrence as well as having a board wipe uh, built into a card. So the main win condition of the deck, though, is the Memorial to Folly grind with uh, Molder Hulks. So, um, you know, you play your creatures and then you Memorial to Folly, get that creature back. For example, like a Crawl Harpooner or a Chupacabra, get that value back. And when Memorial to Folly is in the graveyard, 
you cast your Molder Hulk for much cheaper than the 9 mana that it is, you get a 6 6 body, and then you can return not to your hand, but from the graveyard to the battlefield. So uh, you get that Memorial of the Folly back, and you're really just trying to go infinite with that, with that grind out. So, um, really great uh, strategy, but it can only be stopped by Ixalan's Binding, because uh, or Exile Effects. Um, maybe like a Syncopate or something like that. But, anyways, really fun strategy. Uh, very Golgari, very uh, undergrowth. Feels awesome, very flavorful. Playing with all these, uh, you know, Golgari creatures, but uh, anyway, so let's move on into round one. I went 0 2 against uh, four color Nexus of Gates. So, Gates of Blaze is a real, real threat. I mean, it is, it is real. This is a good card. Uh, I think it took out my, uh, yeah, took out my board with a Molder Hulk. Yeah, in that game, I lost because he explosioned me for. After he dealt with my board, I just had no pressure and he was drawn into his threats. Um, I think he had Chemistry Inside as well. Uh, yeah, he explosioned me for 12. And drew 12 cards, so <laughs> this is a real deck. Um, but yeah, uh, he's a good player. He's he played Jeskai Control uh, in the previous meta, uh, Guild of Ravnica. So uh, I think his name is Chris. I see him, you know, not every weekend, but he's he's he shows up pretty often. So yeah, lost 0 and 2 against him. Um, the Silesian Tokens deck. So oh man, I made a huge mistake. I didn't include sideboard tech against the aggro decks with uh, Golden Demise or. Um, the Cry of Carnarians. As a matter of fact, I think Cry of Carnarians is not good in this style of a deck because you don't want to be exiling your own creature cards because I think it exiles all creature cards. But anyways, uh, yeah, I think it's, it exiles all cards that go into the graveyard uh, at that during that turn. I don't know. Uh, but Cry of Carnarians, I think, is counterintuitive with the Golgari strategy, but I forgot to include the Golden Demises, though. That's the main thing. So I got wrecked by this deck. I, I've been having trouble with Slizzany Tokens for a while now, but... Yeah, it is a real deck. Uh, you gotta have the sideboard tech against the token, go wide strategies, or you know, just aggro decks in general, like the mono white decks. Um, so yeah, uh, this guy is also there's actually two Slidian token players that I know of. Um, I haven't seen the first guy in a while, but this th this guy, uh, he's like a, a waiter at a, a restaurant, so he doesn't you know I, he doesn't always go to F and M's. That's the main thing. Like he, I don't see him from uh, every week. Um, but when he is here, uh, he plays this insane Slizzy Tokens deck. So, um, moving on, I got the buy. Um, yeah, so this is my meta. Um, the Rakdos Burn deck was another kind of take on the Sword Point Diplomacy and Sovereign's Bite deck. It used uh, Theater of Horrors. And the Rakdos Midrange deck, I've actually been playing a lot against um, with the Spawn of Mayhems and Rekindling Phoenix. Uh, so, yeah, you'll actually see uh, me actually play against him later on. And then this Naya Midrange deck is different than another Naya Midrange deck, uh, which you'll see later. But, um, yeah, this one utilized the Girl Spellbreaker as well as Knight of Autumns, which I thought were interesting. Uh, yeah, and Conclave Tribunals. So, uh, this player was, he plays the Spicy Bant uh, Prime Speaker Vanfar deck. Um, so, yeah, it's really interesting meta that I'm a local against. And also, the three Drake players, I... I haven't seen all three of those guys before. Like the Arclight Phoenix guy, um, he mainly plays on the commander tables, but the other two, um, yeah, I just don't see him on my FNM uh, on a week to week basis. So it was kind of interesting. Like all of a sudden we had three Drake players, uh, you know, during this week. But, anyways, so I did go against, go against um, the Grixis guy, um, Grixis version. So I actually didn't. I didn't write down if he had like cast styles or anything, so I don't, I'm not sure if he splashed black just for dispersal or if he had other black spells. But um, the main thing is he, he was playing the four Terramanders, the four Enigma Drakes, and the four Crackling Drakes. So this was different than the Arc Like Phoenix version, and also think the other Drake deck was only Is It. So um, this guy was the only one splashing the black. Um, but yeah, I went two and zero against him. Um, the Crawl Harpooners and um, the Ravenous Chupacabras were mega clutch. Um, just really great cards to lock down the deck, uh, and you yeah, got find finality or find, yeah, find, just to get uh, the chupacabras back. So, anyways, um, yeah. So these were my final tables. Uh, Arc like Drake's actually won the whole thing, which I thought was funny. So the the guy, he I guess he just mainly plays commander, and then this week he was like, you know, what, I'm just gonna wreck F and M standard, <laughs> and then he. Uh, yeah, he's back on playing commander tables, so I thought that was kind of funny because I don't actually see him in FNM standard that much. I see him mainly in the commander tables, so I thought that was kind of interesting, kind of funny. But um, yeah, the Esper Control deck actually beat out the four color Nexus of Gates deck, which is um, I think I saw like a Lyra Dawnbringer given uh, the Nexus of Gate deck trouble. So 
yeah, that those were the two winners of the two last tables. So moving on into week seven of the Ravnica Allegiance meta, I brought my Golgar Graveyard deck again. Um, I actually didn't swap out, you know, until week eight. I just got restless. Um, but uh, yeah, week seven, I made some adjustments, included the Golden Demises into my sideboard, also swapped back from the Orzhov Enforcers back to the Knight of Malices, just because there's a lot of white in my meta uh, with, you know, Mono White Weenie, Azorius Weenie, uh, which I'll, I have played against later that you'll see. Um, and I saw I included more uh, play crafters just to have more creature removal with, along with the crawler pinners and the chupacabras um, I, I finally took out the charnel trolls just because I think I had like one bad incident with the charnel troll um, I got it early in the game and yeah it's probably not a good you know in the long run if you if you see the deck maybe one charnel troll is totally fine completely fine because I have one with that card before uh, but at the same time, you know, I just wanted to include more play crafters. I think I main decked a Isareth too, which I thought was just a little bit better. Bring back, um, you know, uh, a Pilfering Imp or like a Crawl Apooner or something like that. So, um, yeah, I think I main decked one Isareth. Uh, but anyways, uh, yeah, the Mac Rakdos Midrange deck. Um, I So this kid, he was playing the Mono Red Goblins before, and I think maybe really early on in the in this meta, or maybe perhaps Guild Ravnica meta, but... He's gone into more of a Rakdos mid-range, so he has the four copies of the Spawn of Mayhem and uh, the two cast downs, and I didn't write it here, but he also has the Goblin Chain Rollers as well, so um, yeah, it's definitely a Rakdos aggro mid-range deck. Um, I think he only has the two copies of Flame of Keld, if I'm not mistaken, uh, from when I was, yeah, I, maybe two or three, I don't know. I know he doesn't have the full playset, though. Um, Oh yeah, and crawl, crawl our uh, foragers, crawl foragers. I had splashed, uh, or I had, I didn't splash. Uh, I had one, um, only one copy in my sideboard, and I actually drew it, and that was really clutch for game two for me to win, uh, just so I could sustain myself. And he had to deal with a four four, um, and then game three. Oh yeah, game three. So I had two golden mises that I drew in the game, that really uh, helped me stabilize, and I top deck a. Uh, kicked Josu Vest, and I think the district guides along with the Glossworth Shamans really helped my man out that game. It was kind of a drawn out game, so I, I was able to kick a Josu Vest, and he just couldn't deal with the Josu Vest. Um, he actually had a cast down that he couldn't kill the Josu Vest, and all the zombies have menace too, which is so yeah, that was a close game. It was 3 7, and I yeah, got him uh, on the board state, so yeah, that was crazy. Um, yeah, so he, had, he did have a spawn of mayhem out on the board, but um. Yeah, yeah, I dealt with it, I guess. Yeah, that was a crazy game. That was a crazy game. I'm, I'm trying to read my handwriting. I kind of scribbled down quickly because, you know, I don't want to take too much time of people when I'm writing stuff down. So, um, the nine mid-range deck. This was a spicy deck. Holy crap! This one was insanely greedy as far as mana. You know, with the Resplendent Angel as well as the full playset, I think, of the Steel Leaf Champions. So, um. Yeah, this was a crazy deck. He also had Risk Factor, too. I don't know if that was a one of or, yeah. And, yeah, the Carnage Charm. He had the Ripjaw Raptors as well. So, um, kind of a mana intensive deck. Uh, but at the same time, I mean, it was, it, was, it killed me. I mean, it, it destroyed me, as a matter of fact. I, I don't think I, either game I got him down below 15 HP. So, he was always having that board presence. Um, I guess the only way that you can really maybe, I guess, go under this deck or. I don't know. I mean, you got to deal with the Resplendent Angels as well as the Steel of Champions somehow. So, yeah, just, uh, yeah, he just, yeah, he had two Resplendent Angels in game two. I had him all down to six, though, but, yeah, he just got the jump and just sustained that pressure. And when you drop a Carnage Tyrant, I think, yeah, he had the Carnage Tyrant in game one. I just couldn't deal with the, yeah, I couldn't deal with that. So, yeah, that was a spicy deck. Um, and he actually was, he, I played him uh, later on, and he had a uh, Azorius Weenie deck, so he's a little bit of a spiky player. As a matter of fact, that's the same guy. His name is AJ. Yeah, his name is AJ, and he has, because uh, we were talking about cubes, and he has like a cube for everything. He has a modern cube. He has a, a popper cube. He has a commander cube. I mean, the guy is like really spiky, uh, really into magic, and we were talking about um, popper, and the reason why he couldn't make the most recent popper this past Saturday was because he was going to an SEG, 
like Star City Games regional event or something. I don't know. Um, but anyways, moving on to round three, I went two and one against Grix's Control. So um, this one was uh, piloted by one of the judges at my game store. And she, uh, yeah, the thought erasers don't really work out against my deck too well because I'm mainly playing against uh, playing with creatures. So I think she took out like one of my creatures and yeah, it was just another resource in my graveyard. So like I don't feel the effects of thought erasure as much, uh, you know, with the Go uh, Golgari graveyard strategy. Um, Oh yeah, and the opponent flooded out in game one. Um, she got the win in game two with uh, uh, Rekindling Phoenix. I did get a Joseph S out on the board, but she just got the better of the race. Yeah, she outraced. And then game three was an epic match. So I, I had two duresses early in the game. I got one of her syncopates. Um, she eventually got two Thought Erasers, two Nicol Boluses, and two Thief of, In of Sanities. But I had answers for all of them, practically. I had two Crawl Harpooners and three Ravenous Chupacabras, and I just grinded out the game. Uh, she didn't draw into a Rick and the Phoenix in game three, so that didn't really pose a, a, a you know, a, 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 a huge problem for me. Um, like in game two, that's how she outraced me was the Rick and the Phoenix. I just couldn't deal with it. But yeah, um, really close matchup, uh, but I actually ended up losing it against Grix Control later on in like week, this past recent weekend, so... Uh, yeah, really good deck, I think. Uh, maybe not, like, really well positioned against something like Esper Control, but um, still, I mean, you know, she's making it work. So, round four, opponent was a no-show. Apparently, he had a buy in the previous round, and he just didn't officially write it down on paper that he was dropping, so he just kind of, like, walked off. But, um, yeah, we all started playing. I was actually, like, you I know, mean, I was going to wait for my opponent. Maybe he was in the bathroom or something, but... Uh, yeah, they didn't like they, everyone started playing and they didn't want to like, you know, redo the whole thing um, Like scrap the whole round and re remake the the pairing so I just got ended up getting the win which is you know, I guess nice, but um, Yeah, it was like a, I only went 2-1 as far as true record. So this is my meta though um, The ores on mid-range deck had the pitiless pontiff Ser serif of scales. There's only one soul type mid-range deck um, That was playing the wild girl with walker package uh, the Explore package, um, the Mono White Weenie, yeah, so it was the middle school crew, he was one of the middle school crew kids, uh, the Rakdos Midrange, and the Gokar Graveyard, that's kind of like the middle school crew, um, and the Boros Aggro, yeah, those four kids, yeah, those four kids are, they all played this week, um, and yeah, the Is It Drake player, uh, this guy, I, I played him, gosh, he was from way back, um, he's playing the budget version of the Is It Drake's, so the, the so he didn't have perfect mana he didn't have um what is it he he didn't have the like the steam vents and uh what the canals or whatever um yeah and there's only one mono blue player so again another diverse meta um and moving on into week eight was when i got restless i just i was like all right i got my promo with Golgari graveyard do i really want to like keep on grinding with this deck and try and go 4-0 with this one deck and i'm just like eh you know maybe one day i will focus and, and try and be a little bit more competitive try and get more promos but for now i i like the play style of being a wild card every weekend play something new because um you know i do play all these decks um in you know casual kitchen table level magic but taking it to an fnm level where it's a little bit more serious a little bit more competitive uh that that's what i like right now and yeah, again, like, maybe it'll change when I go on to MTG Arena and I can start playing around with a bunch of different jank. But for now, I like building up my collection of different decks for the kitchen table, local mini meta that I have going on with my friends. Um, and, yeah, that's just my playstyle right now. But week eight, this deck, Fire Song and Sunspeaker. This deck, I don't know, like, there's something wrong, like, with it. Uh... So the main deck's win con is Fire Song and Sunspeaker, and it's a six mana play, and it's just, it's really greedy. It's kind of a six mana do nothing because you tap out to bring it out, and it's very susceptible to removal. Um, but at the same time, it's just so spicy to try and pull off multicolored uh, red and white spells so you can trigger both clauses. Because since it is a white spell as well as being a red spell, it gives it lifelink. You gain the life, it's considered a white spell, so you trigger... The second clause of Fire Song Sunspeaker, so it's a huge combo deck. So I think 
you know, I might go away from the Founder of Renewal and Dawn of Hope package because Dawn of Hope is kind of clunky. It's kind of, you know, you, like when a Founder of Renewal procs, you have to pay the two mana to draw a card. So it's kind of greedy in the early game. And also, another thing is I didn't have the Lightning Strikes. I should have had the Lightning Strikes. Um, I actually sold off my Lava Coils um, for, so I swapped them out for Dismissive Power Mansions, which is not a good idea. Lava Coils, way superior. Um, but I sold off the Lava Coils because I just thought... Uh, the card has spiked. It's like 250, I think, each, and on certain uh, markets, uh, I think it's right now it's like two dollars now. But because I think it's uh, being seen as a reprint. But I sold off my lava coils, and um, yeah, I might buy more of them again. Uh, but I think lightning strike could totally just be a good substitute for lava coil um, instead of dismissive pyromancer. I kind of got greedy with the dismissive pyromancer because I thought. Maybe I could utilize the discard a card, draw a card effect, kind of have a little mini engine uh, built into the card. But um, yeah, maybe I should go with like more of a like a Raptor Hatchling main deck those, and maybe like a Ministrant of uh, Obligation or I think or what is this? It's the three mana two one that has Afterlife two. So you know I crack that first half and then I have two one one tokens and then I build up my board with a bunch of tokens like with uh, Raptor Hatchling for instance get fire song and sunspeaker out and then definitely clary on the whole board you know that maybe that'll be another good strategy um so i don't know where the deck is at the at the moment um sometimes you know if you do curve out uh into found a renewal into like a johnny's primate for instance you know johnny's primate uh, is almost always going to eat a removal early in the game or get conclave tribunal or something um so you know as far as control deck uh, I don't know. It's just uh, I think it needs a lot more reps. Oh, it definitely needs settle the wreckage as well. I don't have to settle the wreckages just because a full play set is like twenty bucks. I think I think it's trading about four to five dollars. So yeah, the deck's all over the place. It needs to um, get a lot more refinement on something like MTG Arena, for instance. Um, maybe make it more of a of a prison deck with like seal aways and baffling ends in game one. I don't know because um, I I do play with um, quite a lot of creatures in game one. Like, I think maybe like uh, 15, I think, uh, maybe 14, maybe a little bit less than that. I forgot what my, uh, what my, uh, creature count is, but maybe you take away a bunch of my creatures only have fire sun, sunspeaker, as well as some, uh, early game token generators, like the Raptor hatchling and the ministrant, uh, with afterlife Two. just have those as early game blockers. Um, and I do have the main deck squee though, the one squee, uh, just because I think it's funny, but yeah, there's just a lot of ways where you can take Fire Song and Sunspeaker uh, too, and I just I just think it's such a spicy concept though. I really like the idea of the card. So, so for the Zorius Weenie, um, the biggest problem is a Donna Vanguard. Um, so like I said before, maybe go with more of uh, like Seal Away, Baffling Ends to deal with hard creatures like an Adana Vanguard because I Clarioned a board, killed a Sky Marcher. Um, a Snubhorn, but the Hunt and Witness and the Dawn of Vanguard lived, and yeah, just can keep up. Um, I got a Fountain as well as a Dawn of Hope out, but it was just like, you know, it, it's clunky. You need to deal with the creatures. You need to deal with the board state. So, um, yeah, definitely need more removal, exile removal in those um, baffling in and seal away. Um, maybe even main deck in my deck, uh, Conclave Tribunals or. Um, yeah, just go with more exile strategy. But uh, game two was, uh, you know, I sideboarded in the Raptor Hatchlings, which did slow the game down. Um, yeah, I got Siege Gang out. Uh, but yeah, it was a curve out with the Benelish. He had two Adonal Vanguards, uh, Loxodon. I did get a Fire Song on Sunspeaker out because I think he burned a removal on one of his Clawclave Tribunals um, on my Primate. And. Yeah, he, he splashed, he negated, yeah, <laughs> he negated a Clarion, yeah, oh yeah, he had the Dauntless Bodyguards too, he sacrificed the Dauntless Bodyguard for one of my responses, I think, yeah, response, um, yeah, for five, but sacrificed Dauntless Bodyguard, so, uh, yeah, he just was out, yeah, he just outboard stated me, um, so yeah, like I said, um, Probably need to go with more prison strategy. Definitely needs to settle the wreckages though to deal with decks like this. Um, going in round two, Golgari Graveyard. So this was another deck that I had trouble with. Again, needs the head to exile removal because uh, turn one, he had the Memorial Glow Spore, Stitchers, 
he got three Stitcher suppliers in this game. Um, the Journey to Eternity is what got me. The Journey to Eternity, because then he just play craftered. Um, yeah, Drew Dunn. He has Zo need for 15. Uh, yeah, 15 insects. So, um, yeah, once he flips his Journey to Eternity uh, to be able to constantly get back his Zonies, um, yeah, it's game over because he plays with four Zoni uh, Thousand Eyed. So. Uh, definitely a different strategy than the Molder Hulk strategy. Uh, he has no Molder Hulks, as a matter of fact. Um, yeah, but uh, yeah, game two, he actually had the Spyglass, uh, Sorcerer Spyglass on my Hwatli. So that locked out one of my cards immediately, right then and there. Um, yeah, Raptor Hatchley didn't do much. Uh, I really... Uh, yeah, he, he had two playcrafters. He so yeah, I had to sacrifice my Raptor hatchling as well as my Aurelia. Um, let's see here. Oh yeah, he also sideboarded in uh, Vraska Relic Seeker. Um, so that one got I think my Fire Song. Yeah, he he killed my Fire Song with that. So yeah, just uh, another bad matchup. Um, definitely needs more Exile removal. Uh, at least my you know Fire Song on such a bigger deck. But yeah, I don't know if I want to drop the money on the settle the wreckages. I think I'm just gonna go with maybe like seal aways and baffling ends. So yeah, got to take uh, the deck a little bit differently. Um, experiment with it on the kitchen table. And oh yeah, so round three, um, the guy was the Esper control player. He was 0 and 2 though, so he only stayed for the door prize. And he just decided to drop in this round, but he wanted to play me with his uh, Bant Spirits deck that he just recently built. So yeah, I I, I think I lost by like turn five or turn six. Um, yeah, he had the Ether Vial, and I think he had two Drog Skull Captains on the board, and I just, I was like, what am I going to deal with this? <laughs> like, I can't do anything, because <laughs> they're hexproof, you know, so it's, it's crazy. Okay, so moving on into round four was uh, a Team of Reclamation deck. Um, this guy I haven't seen before. He said he just recently moved back into the area, but, um, yeah, I haven't actually seen this guy before, so it was interesting to see his take on it, because he main decked the Fiery Cannonades. And I thought it was interesting that he didn't splash white for, um, you know, like something like a definitely Clarion. Uh, but, you know, he had the same main win conditions with Expansion Explosion, Wilderness Reclamation. Uh, he had the Growth Spirals, the Ops uh, in his early game, as well as uh, Search for Ascanta. And he also had the main deck Niv Mizzets. So that's what actually got me. Um, yeah, in the early game, he had, he was using, oh, yeah, yeah, he had Sinister Sabotage for my Hwatli. And. He Sinister Sabotage my Dawn of Hope uh, early in the game in turn 4, I think. Yeah, T4, yeah, Dawn of Hope, Sinister Sabotage, so... Um, yeah, that was a, a bad start because I couldn't get my draw engine going. And... Yeah, he chemistry insided after he got his Nimbus on the board. Um, and just pinged me <laughs> to death, essentially. Uh, game 2, I was on the play. I got my Squee out, but Squee just wasn't able to do any pressure. Um... Yeah, he excellent binding. Oh, I excellent binding his uh, Niv Mizzet, but yeah, he expanded. He explosioned me for nine. And he drew nine, and he drew into his other ex explosion. So yeah, once you um once you get like over maybe like turn seven, turn eight with uh, a reclamation deck. I mean, like, expansion explosion is, is serious business. It's it's uh it's no joke. So. Yeah, uh, had a poor showing against this deck with uh, the Boros Control. So, uh, went 0-3. Yeah, 0-3. True record for, with uh, Boros Control. But, yeah, got to experiment. Got to gotta make it a little bit better. Um, tinker around with it a little bit more. But moving on into my most recent the Planeswalker deck challenge that I completed. Which, thank God I completed because... Um, yeah, it's just another burden uh, that I was I didn't want to go into my fourth attempt at doing this So I'm glad you know third time has been the charm for both Vraska and Rawl. Uh, I'm gonna try to get those attempts down from three to two though um, Just because I think it'd be you know because War of the Spark is coming out really soon And I still haven't done the Ravnica Allegiance Planeswalker deck challenges just yet So I gotta I want to complete those but chances are I'm not gonna be able to complete them in time before the next set of Planeswalker decks come out Um but anyways, uh, so yeah, this I just recently made a video on this on the two decks I was playing this weekend. So this was, you know, pretty much already covered with the Tetsuko and the Erratic Cyclops combo, where you invert um, an attacking 
uh, erratic cyclops that is unblockable because of tetsuko so then you swap the you use invert um invert was eroded into for until end of turn they forgot to print that on on there because if it was permanent it would be a lot different of a card uh but yeah it's just uh yeah it was eroded into uh until end of turn um but yeah i also wanted to keep one omni spell adept as well as one apex of power and um you know some other spicy one ofs just so i can be able to tutor out and use the invent half of the card of invert invent so i can omni spell adept invent and get two cards which i did do against um boros Con uh boros aggro so yeah moving on into round one was against you know this kid part of the middle school crew um his name is Josh, but yeah, anyways, Rakdos Control, I've already, or not Rakdos Control, Rakdos Midrange, I've already played against this deck before, um, so I'm familiar with it, and this one was in another insane set of uh, a games, because game three, he got me down to three, uh, so we swapped out games, game one and game two, um, we both mulliganed, uh, I was down to six, he was down to five, which thank God, because you don't want to see like this deck curve out really, really well. Um, but yeah, I just had answers for everything. I had like, she, she even fired his lead in war boss. Um, my de adept. Oh yeah. So my Omni spell adept was cast down. He had a spawn of mayhem. Uh, oh, I double negated his, um, two lightning strikes. So I protected my Tetsuko. Um, I beacon bolted chain world. So I just had a bunch of answers for his stuff. Uh, yeah, I used, I used beacon bolt twice on two chain rollers. Um, man, that was crazy. Fight with fire. Uh, yeah. So my, I won by grinding out with an unblockable Tetsuko with a mystic and a sailor of memes. We've, we've been calling him sailor of memes. Um, but yeah, I just grinded him out just attacking every turn. Uh, I can see here. I'm just going down. His life toll is going down by three. Um, yeah, I, I was able to protect the early Tetsuko with two negates. Um, so that was really really crucial but yeah uh that was that was a cool cool match um all right so for grixis control which is uh piloted by one of the judges she also plays the frexian scriptures and the fall of thran um wombo combo with uh mardu legends you know all the different legendary creatures um she also plays uh, two copies of urza's ruinous blast on that deck but it seems like she's mainly focusing on the grixis control deck now but yeah, um, this deck I had to struggle with, um, you know, game one, I, yeah, I strike the Thief of Sanity, she, uh, thought erasured one of my mist, yeah, Murmuring Mystic, and I had a Tetsuko out early in the game, but she had Angrathed it, and, um, yeah, it was, I had the explosion for one on Angrath, which is not a good play, but I had to do what I gotta do, because otherwise I'm gonna be discarding a card every time, um, and, yeah, she got three boluses out. So, I, and then a rekindling phoenix. Um, so even if I dealt with the bolus, uh, yeah, yeah, it, it, it didn't matter. Uh, she, yeah, I kicked. Uh, she even fire on the first bolus. Um, so even though, though I had these answers, she was able to get her uh, card advantage up with uh, Argyle's Bloodfast. So game one just didn't go my way. Um, game two, I sideboard in. Um, you know, the Goblin Gatherings, uh, which I think are just a little bit too cute. Uh, I think from the sideboard, I need to improve it. Just make it more like, uh, like Deep Freeze or whatever it is. The three mana, uh, blue enchantment where it essentially turns a creature into an 0-4 defender and loses all abilities. I need to just have those in the sideboard. I think the Goblin Gatherings along with the Calvacade is a little bit too cute. Um, I, I think I should just focus on, um, you know, the Radix Cyclops, Invert, you know, burst damage as opposed to, you know, the go wide. I just think it was a little bit too cute because I, I put in the Goblin Gatherings, um, which one of them did get Sinister Sabotaged, but, um, it, you know, they just don't do much. Uh, yeah, they, they just don't do much. Um, oh, she flipped a Bolus this time. Yeah, she flipped a Bolus. Oh, and then she got her Niv. Yeah, she so she uh, side decks um, the Niv Mizzets, and yeah, she drew to uh, kill two of my Goblins with it, uh, killed an Enigma Drake with it. And, oh, I did negate um, an insane explosion. I think she explosioned me for a huge amount uh, in the towards the late game. But Niv Mizzet, I just had no answer for the Niv Mizzet, and uh, she just pinged me to death. Um, so yeah, it was just uh, she got the better advantage of you know the, the answers, um, you know, versus the you know control versus control. I guess my deck is kind of control early in the game, but um, yeah, I just wasn't able to to pull away 
from that card disadvantage uh, that, you know, Grixis Control, um, you know, with the Thought Erasures, the Angrath, the Sinister Sabotage. But anyways, moving on into Boros Aggro. Um, so this kid is also part of the middle school crew. So he, this is his main deck. Uh, he's been playing this deck for quite a while. Um, he also has the Sun Home Stalwarts. But uh, yeah, one game one, he had a mulligan down to five. Um, oh, another thing that's really important is that he has the Justice Strikes instead of the Lightning Strikes. So if he had the Lightning Strikes, um, he would have been able to burn me down uh, because the Lightning uh, Justice Strike in game one did nothing against my deck um because it's uh it deals power to your toughness um so yeah i had a bunch of answers for all of his threats for the most part i omni oh yeah omni spelled a rawls dispersal on his aurelia so he he attacked with aurelia i rolls uh dispersal for three mana with omni spell of death which is pretty sweet uh because you're able to tutor out your rawl but at the same time like you know at his main two he just played his aurelia again so, um, you know, five mana bounce spells are really not that good, in my opinion, even if it does tutor out a, uh, you know, a Planeswalker. Um, but yeah, he Lava Cold by Omni spell after that. Um, I fight with Fired. Yeah. And Raw Color of Storms for card advantage. Yeah. So I was able to grind him out with uh, Tetsuko and a Sailor of Means. Because I had, I, yeah, I had answers, I had Achieving Fire, I had Strikes for his Challengers, yeah. So I was able to grind him out on that one. He got Game 2 with a perfect curve out. Um, I didn't even touch him in Game 2. He, yeah, he had the Banneray, the Hawk, the Tajik, um, yeah, Legion War Boss. Uh, he had Tajik number 2, so I, yeah, I just wasn't able to, um, to deal with that. Uh, game 3, though, I was on the play. This was an epic game because... Um, yeah, bodyguard. Oh yeah, he had the Dauntless bodyguard along with the hawk. He light up the stage. Um, oh, that's another thing I should have wrote. Yeah, well, he had light up the stage along with the risk factors. That was kind of his draw engine. Um, I did sideboard in the four goblin gatherings. I took out the two rolls dispersal, uh, one overflowing insight, and one gravity punch, just so I can have a little bit more of a board presence. So I can goblin gathering for two, trade it in, um, and then you know the more goblin gatherings later in the game i could trade them in i only drew one though i think yeah i only drew one so i traded that the first goblin gathering into the tajik um so he was mentoring he got the heroic reinforcements i had the drake um yeah he got the aurelia out and he got up to like 34 hp um and once i started to turn the corner yeah, so I inverted a um, Fiery Cannonade and a Beacon Bolt. So I was able to Beacon Bolt his Aurelia, uh, not his Aurelia, but his Lyra Dawnbringer. And I Fiery Cannonade his other board, and I just had a better board presence after that, and I turned the corner. And I was on, I was sitting on 1 HP the whole time. Um, yeah, that was crazy. That's that, that was another thing. He didn't have any Lightning Strikes. He took out all of his Lightning Strikes for Lava Coils and uh, Justice Strikes. We were talking after the game. And... You know, he did have Risk Factor, but I just let him draw. But because um, he didn't have, uh, you know, the, the reach, the burn damage with the Lightning Strikes, uh, or the Shocks. I don't even think he had the Shocks. I, I Yeah, he, I didn't write down that he had Shock either. So, yeah, maybe that was... I think that's a pretty big mistake to not play with those, especially with, the you know, the aggro strategy. But, you know, that's just me. Maybe he got a little bit carried away with the Lava uh, Coils and the Justice Strikes. But, um... Yeah, I eventually turned the corner, and I had the Cyclops out, I had the, the Drake out. Um, yeah, that was an epic match. That was an epic, epic match. So I'm really glad that I was able to deal with the Rakdos midrange, uh, as well as this Boros aggro deck, and, you know, get two legitimate wins with this invert combo deck. Um, and Omni Spell Adept with the invent part, it, you know, just as a one of for the Omni Spell, because... You don't want to be drawing multiple Omni spells early in the game. Uh, you'd rather be drawing your other cards, uh, t your answers, for example, like the Sheevan Fires and uh, the light Lightning Strikes. Um, just go one for one so you can start establishing your board presence. Um, start getting out your Erratic Cyclops and such. Um, yeah, it was just... I'm, I'm actually really glad that it, you know, from a, coming from the kitchen table onto FNM, it actually worked. So... Um, but I did lose in the final round, so I was 2-1 and one going into the final round, and I, I went against this 4 color Gates deck, and, and Game 1 went so well for me. It was literally the perfect Game 1, I think. I got the, you know, he, early in the game, he was Shimmer of Possibility. Uh, you know, he was using Shimmer of Possibility. And I got 
three uh, erratic cyclops out and I had two on the board and I swung in at, in at him and I inverted and I dealt 16 damage which you know coming from the kitchen table like I said onto the FNM to see that happen feels so good um yeah that was that was great uh yeah and then the next yeah I just lighting striked with my four um with my three uh erratic cyclops out so I was able to get him easily in game one. It went perfectly for me in game one. Game two, though, I think I got a little bit too cute. Um, yeah, I took out uh, the two Sheevan Fires because, you know, I, I thought, uh, you know, against um, some like the Gaybreaker Ram or, or any of his other creatures. Uh, and later I would find out that he would only play, he played the full place of the Gaybreaker Ram, the four Gate Colossus, and then the two Archway Angels. That was his only win conditions. Um... You know, I, th I think it was good to take those out, and then I put in the Siege Gang Commander and the Jaya Ballard. Um, so, yeah, that this game I just I couldn't deal with the Gatebreaker Ram; it just it went out of control. Um, so I didn't, you know, my Beacon Bolt wasn't able to reach him. It was just, uh, yeah, the Gatebreaker Ram went rampant, and you know, I was really impressed by Shimmer Possibility because um, the Shimmer Possibility he played it one time, and he immediately grabbed a card, and I was like, oh crap that's a gate breaker ram isn't it like i knew like he immediately got that card um and yeah he confirmed it later on we were talking about it and uh, i'm actually really impressed by shimmer possibility i think in this deck in my uh you know is it erratic cyclops uh wombo combo deck with invert i think shimmer possibility is actually a really great card to you know a turn two play you can filter out um get what you need in the early game set your plays up um so i think i might actually include a full place in my deck so i you know, I'm actually, even though I didn't get the promo and I lost in the last round, I lost two games in a row. Um, you know, he's a really cool guy and, you know, just, he gave me the whole, whole deck list afterwards too. Uh, and it was like a sub $20 budget deck list. I think he's only two cards that were over, uh, that were kind of expensive. He has two main decks, uh, two main deck, uh, expansion explosions, which I don't have here. And he has two, he had the two angel, uh, Arcway angels, two, uh, different clarions and everything else is mainly a four of. Oh, and he has two mass manipulations, I think. Um, so yeah, maybe, I gotta look at the numbers. I, but he has the four Gatebreaker Rams, four uh, Gate Colossus, four uh, Growth Spirals, Circuitous Root, uh, four Gates of Blaze, four Guild Summit. So, um, yeah, I mean, the deck works really well. The only thing, I was asking, what, what did he lose to? He lost to the Grixis Control deck. And the Grix, Grixis Control deck, um, she used uh, Unmoored Ego to take out his win conditions. So, um, yeah, that was his only round loss. So he went 3-1. and one. Um, Yeah, but anyways, um, that is it for FNM Standard. Uh, let's move on into my Saturday Popper event. So Saturday was uh, Popper, and round one I went against um, this really spicy uh, Tortured Existence deck. Uh, which I don't know if it was in um, the last popper paper popper that uh, I had, um, and then I went against two mono red decks, um, which they're both friends. They're actually kind of experimenting with different builds. One of them had a traditional mono red burn, and another one went with more spicy creature based, uh, heroic style deck. But anyways, the deck that I was rocking for Saturday popper, again I already went over kind of a, a deck tech of what I was tr uh, playing or trying to do as far as a deck strategy which was a mono black aggro deck, you know, curve out, you know, one drops and into two drops. And I think it topped off at like the blade juggler and um, you'd use ill gotten inheritance to finish off the game because a lot of decks don't have the, the, you know, um, game one uh, enchantment hate to take out ill gotten inheritance. So you just constantly swing in and then ill gotten inheritance would do the job. So, um, you know, round one, uh, it actually went into time. So, he got the game one. I got game two. Um, I think he milled himself uh, his Tortex. Uh, he milled him with, um, yeah, I think he milled him with, uh, I think a dredge or something. Um, yeah, let me get my, just trying to find my notes here. But anyways, uh, game three though is the main thing is he ended up getting so much life with not to the bone that we went to time. Like we went to turn five. Um, you know, the Spore Frog, um, he was Tortexing early in the game with Spore Frogs with uh, the Crip Rats. Uh, yeah, game two, I just curved out really well and I got the pressure on him. And yeah, he didn't have uh, Crip Rats in game two. But um, 
yeah, so anyways, game three ended up with him having 24 life. I, I He has so much, like, I was lowering his life, but then he gained, like, so much life. And then it had the flashback, and I only had one ill-gotten inheritance on the board, too. So, that one was, like, probably, like, 15 turns before um, we went to turn five, and the game uh, ended there. Oh, and another thing I was really impressed with was um, uh, the Kumbaj Witches, along with... Um, the Grasp of Darkness, I was able to deal with the Gurmag Anglers just fine. Um, so, you know, he got Gurmag Anglers um, twice in the matchup in, in all three games. Uh, and I dealt with it both times just fine with uh, that two-card combo with Kumbaj Witches as well as um, uh, Grasp of Darkness. So, I'm glad I, w I didn't main deck the Doom Blades. Um, I'm glad I, I only have two Doom Blades in the sideboard. Oh, and that's another thing is... Um, uh, yeah, my sideboard was different as well. Uh, I didn't have the four guest verdict. I got a little ahead of myself. I just assumed that they would have the guest verdict because I didn't think I was like such an old card. But apparently they were out of stock on that one. Uh, so for my guest verdict, I had, uh, I think, one um, cartouche of ambition. Um, two, uh, I think I had two. Oh, no, I had one um, dead weight. And then I had two Nihil spell bombs. So, um, you know, I was missing four cards on my sideboard, but I brought a bunch of, like, um, uh, other cards as well, uh, just in case they didn't have it. And lo and behold, they didn't actually have the guest verdict, so I'm glad I actually brought my additional cards. But looking back in hindsight, going into the mono red decks, I probably should have, because I had the moment of cravings as well in that, like, little pile that I brought. And I probably should have put those in my sideboard as well, because these decks these mono red decks go hard with um the fire blast that one is such a good card oh my god like you can sacrifice two land and you get that reach you know deal four damage to target creature or player so um yeah against the mono red heroic he only has one he only plays one of the fire blast but he has the the four lightning bolts the four chain lightnings um so this deck is a little bit different um than the round three game uh deck um which is a traditional mono red burn uh, and that guy's really knowledgeable as well. But uh, in this case, um, you know, we went back to back, uh, you know, traded games, game one, game two. Uh, but game three, I was almost able to turn the corner. I stabilized um, with the Mephitic Vapors. I cleared his board, but um, he got my he got me with the Fire Blast off the top deck. So I was just about to turn the corner. I had the board state. I had everything. But uh, yeah. Um, Overall, though, I don't think this strategy works too well. We were talking about it earlier. He just wanted to experiment with it. But um, I don't think the strategy of, of uh, you know, putting all of these uh, enchantments on a creature because you're really susceptible for the two-for-one. But he just wanted to see how fast it, it could be. And, it, you know, I'm telling you, like, it, against my deck, at least, you know, that does a little bit of damage to myself. I mean, it's, it's really fast. Um, so, yeah. He, oh man, the game that he won in game one was insane. He had like, yeah, he had an insane curve out. He attacked me for, he had four 2-1 creatures and a 3-2, which was his emissary that got buffed. So yeah, I mean, that's how it goes wide and it really bursts you down that way. So I could see that how it works in concept, but again, like, I think it's very susceptible for the two-for-ones with the enchantment auras, but Anyways, um, so we only went to round three, by the way. Uh, we didn't actually go into round four because we only had seven players, and then the manager, um, he actually signed up for it just so we can have all, you know, actually have a, a, a full round eight um, of a group of eight people. Um, so we didn't actually go into round four. Apparently, in, in order to have a round four, um, you need to have nine plus players, at least nine. So uh, we got the bare minimum of eight, so we kicked it off. Um, and... You know, so my round three, um, I was going into it 0-1-1, oh, one, one, that one tie against uh, you know, the tor Tortured Existence deck. So um, going into round three, uh, the burn deck was just so well refined. I mean, the guy, uh, he, he was actually helping me out. He was like, oh, can I see your deck? Like, see how we can make improvements. And, and he actually kind of convinced me to not go with the Mephitic, uh, not, not with the Mephitic Vapors. He did recommend Mephitic Vapors for the, I think, Shrivel or the Instant Speed, negative one, negative one. Um, yeah, and it's also two mana only, um, but, yeah, he was also saying about the Geth Verdict, and I told him, yeah, I, I needed the Geth Verdict, but they didn't have any, um, and he also said I needed one more cartouche, and I, I also told him about the Moment of Craving that I, I was thinking about putting into my sideboard, but I actually didn't, 
Um, and I didn't want to like swap change in the middle of uh, you know actually playing. So, um, but yeah, this guy he's really good. He yeah he definitely knew his uh, what he was talking about and. Yeah, he kind of helped me uh, as far as like what I can improve. And he just said, you know, you should abandon the ill-gotten inheritance. Just focus on being an aggro deck, low to the ground, low land count. And um, yeah, yeah, I think he convinced me, which is unfortunate because I, I really wanted to, uh, the ill-gotten inheritance to work. Um, but uh, you know, I, I kind of went back into the the you know thinking process of what I wanted to do as far as you know abandoning the ill-gotten inheritance what i would do uh, to replace the that effect of you know the drain effect and i just think reading up on that uh popper post where he some poster he recommended that um this mono black aggro player uh take out some cards for vault uh well i think he already had the vault scourges but he was recommending the bone splitters and i think i'm gonna do that i'm gonna think i'm just gonna play the full place of a bone splitter the full play set of Vault Scourge and just go all in as far as one drops early in the game, really get that board presence, and then probably chop my land count from 21 swamps to maybe 18 or 19 swamps uh, and just be like a regular aggro deck. So, uh, you know, it's not to say that I'd, I'm never going to play with Ilgon Inheritance again. I'm just probably going to um, do like maybe the Rakdos uh, drain strategy with, um, you know, take notes from any new province from his most recent uh, gameplay video as well as his write up on Popper. Uh, on the popper reddit and yeah just kind of uh see where that kind of concept goes and ma maybe make a rakdos drain uh control deck so but as far as the mono black aggro deck for this popper my my, my own popper aggro uh mono black deck i think i'm just gonna go with the, the bone splitters as well as the vault scourges uh really go all in with the aggro but yeah i don't know when the next uh popper event's gonna be i hope they start firing it up uh you know it's unfortunate because um you know, this weekend was actually crazy. Uh, the 23rd, I think, was Saturday. Um, I think on the 23rd, that was when the SCG event was going on. Um, I think there's two events as well in my metro area um, around Atlanta and the northern Atlanta area. So, uh, but anyways, um, that is it for now. Uh, I'm going to showcase my booster packs. Hope you guys stay tuned for that. I had an insane pull uh, for one of my booster packs that I got just this past weekend um, from... You know, completing the Raw Plans Architect Challenge, my two pity packs that I like to say, because uh, you know you're guaranteed to get those two packs, even if you go 0 and 4 or 2 and 2, you're guaranteed to get those two boosters. So, even though I didn't get the FNM promo, I am really grateful to have gotten uh, another good hit uh, from a booster. So, yeah, take it easy, guys. I'll see you in the next next one. Hey, how's it going, everyone? It's Casual Q, and it is Saturday, so it's after FNM. Uh, these are my notes. I went one and two, true record. Two and two, according to the DCI, I had one buy. Um, I know this is kind of crazy, but uh, this is digestible uh, for me at least. So I'll process this, make a presentation out of it for the FNM monthly battle report. But in the meantime, we're going to open some packs. These are the consolation packs. So my game store, if you go 0 and 2 or 0 and 4 or even 2 and 2, you get two boosters. So let's see here. Boom, boom, boom. Watch over here. Infiltrator. Oh, another Swindling Tide. And a Simic Guild Gate. That's pretty cool. Foil. Sweet. So that's one Swindling Tide. That's pretty good for EDH, I think. Even though we've seen some jank brews on MTG Arena with uh, Smothering Tide ramping out into some crazy stuff. So, let's see what we get here. And, oh nice, Biogenic Goose. That's a pretty decent hit. Cool, so I think this one's mainly seen play from the sideboard. Um, I think some decks may run this in the main. Like that Ban Vanifar deck was running this in the main, but I think uh, Reclamation decks run this from the side. After they have a bunch of mana, they can just crank out tokens. So, cool. That was a pretty good hit. It's a mythic. You know, got my FM promo. I played the exact same deck, which was, uh, since last week, the exact same deck, which was a um, Golgari uh, without the Planeswalker deck challenge. So, I took out the Vraska Regal Gorgon and the two uh, Vraska Stone Glare, which are the tutors. And I put in. I think two chupacabras and 
something else. I forgot what the other one was, but um, last week I went two and two. Um, you know, I had issues with the Slesnia tokens deck, um, so I put in my Golden Demises from my uh, Mono Black Control deck. I don't have a playset of Craft Carnariums yet, so. Um, Plus, I don't want to exile my stuff as far as Golgari is concerned, so I'm going to utilize Golden Demise in the meantime uh, from the sideboard. But I think I over sideboarded last week against Mono Blue. I had two Atsakan Archers, and there wasn't even a Mono Blue player like um, that showed up. So, uh, But yeah, let's crack some packs, see what we get for our FNM payouts. Zoom in, zoom in, there we go. I really like the art of Shimmer of Possibility, I think it's really cool art with, yeah. I think that's Pia Nalar and Jace, or maybe I got that wrong, I don't know. Uh, Chillbringer, sweet. Probably a first pack one, pick one. Galvanade. Oh, nice, WD Detention, thank you. Sweet. And a foil, Watchable Giants. Galvanade, Treasure. So, WD Detention's pretty good. Um, if I'm gonna be doing that Planeswalker deck challenge with, uh, what's, who's that? Dom? No, uh, Dovin. Dovin, yeah. Very Duelist. Steeple Creeps. Final Payment. Make the Treason. Oligarch. Angelic Exaltation. Bell Haunt. Carnival Carnage. And, oh, emergency powers. <laughs> God dang it. Uh, well, maybe we can make that work. Uh, I'm getting some tools with Deputy of Detention and emergency powers. Maybe we can find a way to make that work with uh, the Planeswalker Deck Challenge. I don't know. I kind of want to do SBMTG's Strictly Better Magic's uh, $5 infinite combo, blue white, with Lumbering Battlement. So, that might not even play a part, but, oh, we got a foil. But, you never know, I mean, emergency powers, seven mana, you gotta get some treasures to get to that mana cost, and you gotta have some good payout. Oh, nice, incubation druid, that's pretty cool. And a foil sky tether. Sweet. So, we're doing pretty well on the hits. No, like, major dud. I mean, incubation druid, deputy detention, all see play, well, emergency powers is probably already good. So, sorry about that. Phone just, well, just shut off for some reason, but yeah, I was in the middle of opening a pack. Okay, so, Humungulus, Duelist, Scavenger, Blade Juggler, which I'm utilizing in my uh, Mono Black Popper deck right now. Zerta Goblin, sweet. So,. I think there's three copies in the Domri Planeswalker deck, so I needed the fourth. If I want to be doing that, well, actually, SBMTG he just released a Nikia deck, but I think I'm gonna do Golden um, with the Glass of the Guildgate, you know, multicolored cards to get plus one plus one. So I might try that, but I, I needed a fourth one for the Grohl Planeswalker deck challenge. So, oh nice, Blood Crypt. So awesome, we did pretty well on our. Hits. Uh, we did get one kind of a dud, but it is a mythic, so. Um, I also got Rakdos the Showstopper during um, uh, League, MTG League, which is, you know, 30 card decks. But, uh, you know, that one's only like a buck, so. Emergency Powers, I probably imagine it's also around that price, but. You know, we could probably make it work. Gotta think of a way. Maybe to like generate treasures, Smothering Tide for instance, but even then like we gotta have a really good payout because you get a free permanent with converted mana cost 7 or less from your hand, I don't know, just the fact that it's 7 mana, oh it is instant though, hmm. interesting, maybe some kind of blue white control, we'll see, yeah this is it's a challenge to make this work, but if you do make it work, but it's symmetrical, so, eh, I don't know. Gotta do some thinking, gotta do some brewing, but, you know, we did pretty well on all of our other hits. 
really cash out on the, the lands. I've been selling my lands. Um, just because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to buy some more casual decks. I think I'm going to prefer being a mono-colored player if I'm going to be, you know, actually competitive. Not necessarily mono-blue, but, you know, I want to buy into a mono-green stompy deck, so... i got to get the Pell Collector still. But, you know, everything else is pretty good. So, yeah. Thanks for tuning in. And, yeah, this is week... What is this? Week 7? Yeah, week 7. Alright, so got my results for playing Boros Control. Had a pretty poor showing. Um, the deck really needs Settle the Wreckage, I think that's what it is. And also, it's it's some, I think, like a, a control deck that's um, really just needs a lot of playtesting, a lot of um, figuring out. And, you know, it's probably not the best idea to take it to an FNM, like only playing it every now and then on the kitchen table, so. But, you know. Let's take a look at these two pity packs. Uh, oh well, but it's okay. It was still fun to play. But yeah, it definitely need Settle the Wreckage. Or maybe even Cleansing Novus, but... I think Settle the Wreckage is like, what? Four or five dollars uh, each? So, I don't know. Uh, Alright, so let's take a look at... Let's see what we got here. Blade Juggler. Oh, nice, Bedevil. So this one should be good for the next set. Cool. That was a pretty good pull. And let's take a look at number two. Okay, prize. Sophomore Harvard. Harvard. I think this is a really good card. Kind of want to make like a, maybe like a popper mid-range, I don't know. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's really good in my opinion. Um, nice, growth spell. Oh, nice, cure the critics. Do that. Mm, oh, freaking A, man. But, oh, well. So, it's two packs right there for playing Boros Control. Pretty bad packs right there, but... Yeah, I'll uh, go over that, process that. Had some epic matches today. Um, well, I'm gonna say it's fortunately. So fortunately, I did go two and two. Um, I was two and one, and I had some epic matches against uh, Boros Aggro as well as Rakdos Aggro in, in first round. Um, but I lost to a budget sub twenty dollar uh, gate deck in round four, and that one went to game three. And I just couldn't deal with um, you know the gates ablaze. Uh, Gatebreaker Ram and um, Colossal uh, Gate Colossus. So, oh wait, oh, why am I? <laughs> what am I doing? Um, so yeah, I'm actually you know pretty proud of the deck. Um, I'll go over all of the results later, but I'm uh, just gonna go over cracking some packs. So yeah, I didn't get the FNM promo, but I'm finally freaking done with this stupid challenge uh, for Rawl. Um, so I'll you know I'll take it. Oh, Shimmer of Possibility that. Um, he was actually playing uh, in the gate deck. He was playing the the Shimmer of Possibility, so I actually might throw some into the the Rawl deck. So, because you know, I was actually really impressed. Because uh, man, he he had a Shimmer of Possibility and he instantly got one card, and I was like, it was game three, and I was like, oh man, that's a Gate Breaker Ram. I know that's a Gate Breaker Ram. So, um, yeah, let's see what we got here. Um, oh, Dice Terramander. Ooh, okay. Theora Absolution. I don't think I got a copy yet for the cube, so I'll throw that into the cube. Terramander is really nice. I think it's about two bucks, um, and it's not getting reprinted, so what is a good pack one pick one here? Maybe Chillbringer. Um, Chillbringer, maybe Skatewing Spy, but probably Chillbringer. Oh no, <laughs> Theory Absolution. What am I talking about? <laughs> so yeah, that's a good mini pack right there. Had a Terramander, so maybe I can trade that in. I think it was about two dollars, two fifty, I think, right now, because it's seen play in pretty much uh, all formats, I think, even Legacy um, or one of those like classic formats. So let's see here, pity pack number two. Um, oh my god, <laughs> dude! Oh, Guild of Ravnica, I got. 
double um zoom in come on man oh come on what oh, there you go oh my gosh dude that is crazy wow so i didn't get the promo but i got the hydroid crisis and it was actually really cool because um the gate guy uh he went three and one and he actually took a big break um, got back into Commander and everything, and then got back in Guild Ravnica, bought the Guild Kits, and then this was like his first FNM doing Standard, and he's been playing Arena, and he, he likes the Gate deck, so I think that's pretty cool. Actually, I think that's a good substitute if you want to play Control. Um, you know, they didn't play uh, print uh, a Control deck, so I think the Gate deck could be a good Control deck, because it has the, uh, you know, Gates of Blaze, but man, Hydra Crisis number two. I already sold my first one, um, so probably sell this one as well but yeah wow what a pull man that was what a great day what a great day even though i didn't get the promo i mean two and two got the challenge done i'm off of this burden um yeah third attempt so hopefully i can get so i'm gonna purchase maybe domri or dovin i think i'm gonna do the Grohl. yeah uh domri so yeah that was awesome i can't believe i just pulled my <laughs> Uh, yeah. Well, that's just uh, good luck for me, I guess.